Tony Poulos here at DSP Leaders World Forum in Windsor. Our next version of the Extra Shot includes three well-known celebrities of the industry. Neil McRae, who is Chief Network Strategist at Juniper Networks. Welcome, Neil. Hey. Next to him, Andrew Collison, who's the founder and principal of Connective Insight. Andrew, good well to catch up at last. And least but not last, also, is Anita Dollar, who is the CEO of the NGMN Alliance. We've had a fabulous session talking about green, the green network, driving network efficiencies from network core to edge. Two of you are on that uh, panel, but I want to ask you first, Neil, uh, Susanna, who was also on there, said it's really as simple as adding new software to increase efficiencies on the network. Isn't that true? I think that's a starting place for sure. Um, we see many service providers running, you know, older code because it works. They don't, they don't feel they need to update it. But over the last few years, there's a lot of new protocols, a lot of new capabilities, a lot of new things that enable massive power savings, even on on legacy devices. So it's a it's an easy way to start the journey because you're not having to migrate customers, you're not having to do any heavy lifting do some software testing, partner with your vendor. We do this with many of our customers and we roll out code that, that saves money literally from the minute the, the, the router boots. So yes, it can be as simple, but it's not, it has to be taken seriously. There's testing that needs to be done because you don't want to upset customers. So, but yes, that is a place to start. Well, uh, interesting point you raised, Neil. Uh, Andrew, is cost reduction really the main reason for us to look at green networks? Well, no, it's not the only re reason, but I think it's a very um, tangible and I think powerful reason because you can talk a lot about things like sustainability and environmental and, and we all want that, but you can't measure it. You can measure power, you can measure the cost of power. And I think most people have become suddenly experts in the cost of power in the last 18 months. If you live in Europe, certainly, Anita, wouldn't you say? And Neil, you know, we've yeah. all done it. And Susanna yeah. on the panel said she put a new application in the kitchen and she noticed the change in energy. Yes. I, I think everybody feels that. So, no, I don't think it's the main reason, but I think it's the most measurable and tangible reason for it in answer to your question. What I'd like to have heard a bit more about, and maybe Neil and Anita can tell me, because is what what, what Lee said uh, was, uh, Lee from Vodafone said that it had become flat in usage, but not in costs. Do we know what difference has been made to networks over the last, say, 18 months in power consumption? Does anyone know? I, I mean, I don't. I've not followed it. Do you have a number? Rather difficult to measure, isn't no, it? No, I think it's, it's, it's hard to measure. And that's also why in NGMN we are working on metering uh, requirements. Mm. Uh, so that's the precondition of understanding the energy consumption. But back to the question whether it's just about um, cost savings, I think it's uh, a mixture of, of course, cost savings. It's clear. Um, I mean, um, I liked a lot of statement from Gabriela this morning uh, from BT. It's either increasing revenues or um, reducing uh, costs. So one form or another is necessary. But we also don't have an alternative as the industry if we want to go ahead. So we have to find new ways. Uh, with regards to energy uh, management, with regards to energy efficiency um, means. And um, last but not least, how do we measure it and how do we report it in a standardized way? And it's not, not an easy task, but failure is not an option. I thought so. something else actually though on this, and Neil, I don't know if you know about this, you mentioned October, yeah. uh, the initiative that BT used to run to, to turn stuff off. And I was thinking about this, is, is it something that people are incentivized to do widely in, in, in the industry? And I mean, Anita, you might know about, are they incentivized to reduce energy yeah. and to reduce cost? Is well, it an ongoing thing or uh, a one-off uh, thing? So, so look, in that, in that period, we saw huge energy rises. Mm. Um, and look, businesses are simple. If you have a good year, everyone gets a bonus, right? And, and there's no easier way to reduce cost than, than turning off power. So, yeah. or turning off systems that use power. So absolutely there's an incentive there. I think the incentive- but There's an incentive for a company, but is there an incentive for the people in the company to do it? Are you getting- Yeah, absolutely. They, they, they'll get, they, they, absolutely. So in, in, in my old shop, BT, I mean, actually, we, I, I can't remember the exact number, but I'm pretty sure every year I was there, we took two or 3% out of our total usage of electricity. And that just hit the bottom line, which meant there was more money for, for pay rises and bonuses. So absolutely, 
Um, if you're able to save money, then that translates into an objective. And, and my personal objectives as a director there, uh, energy usage and energy consumption in green was absolutely a, a, um, a, a personal objective that I was measured on. But getting back to Susanna's example, it's easy in the kitchen to determine that, but how easy is it to monetize cost savings for, say, business cases? You're, you've got to help your customers develop business cases. Absolutely, and I think look, here in Europe it got a lot easier when the price went up, no question about it. But this is my um, this is one of the challenges that we faced in, in telco, and I, I've faced it. In, I've worked for a lot of telcos. I worked for a lot of organisations. We measure payback over two or three years, yeah. and and that makes a case really difficult. But you know, BT is an example, or or NTT. They've been around for a hundred plus years. So if you measure it over, you know, a, a sensible Thanks. number. Then it starts to make sense. Like it's like everyone's building five G and fiber. We didn't. We don't measure that over a two year payback. That's over a ten year payback or a twenty year payback. Yeah, we've got to make sure the cash flows there. But I think I think organisations, at least I see organisations and telcos taking a much longer view on the payback. Yeah. Um, because every year it's it's the you know you, you, you every year every day every minute you're paying something to keep equipment on. The one thing I will say though is, is and this came out interestingly earlier, you know, we want to turn all the old stuff off. That's great if we've migrated customers. And, and quite often I always, used to always remind my team, it's the old stuff where we might be making the most margin or the most money. So it's not just quickly turn off and move customers. We've got to do it in a sensible way that, that's right for the customer, right for the organization, and, and ultimately, ultimately drives the customer to, to actually want to spend more money as we're doing that migration and turning stuff off. But other network operators going to vendors like Juniper and saying, uh, we want the green version, we want the lower consumption version. Are they forcing that issue? Yes. Uh, don't you answer. They are. Andrew, I'll let, you I'll let them. I, actually, a very interesting thing. I work with a group of the Bridge Alliance in, um, in Asia. Yes. And um, we did some work, and this is when I was working at STL Partners. Yep. And we did some work with their procurement teams so this is from operators across Europe and we did this presentation to them saying look one of the best things you can do for sustainability because you know lots of us, we believe in that kind of stuff um, is to ensure it's it's mandated in your in your in your procurement practices and, and I did so with a sort of slight fear because you're talking to procurement and you're yeah. thinking I'm gonna get I'm gonna get killed for this and they were completely up for it so um, I, and I was really touched I thought that was one of the most moving things I've seen in the industry so I, I believe that the the industry wants this. It's a science-based industry. People in it have, um, you know, are quite often driven by doing good things. Would, would you not say? Well, yeah. it's, it's the Energy Men Alliance is being asked it's, as well to yeah. do that. Yes, of course. And it's not only about energy efficiencies in general, the redu reduction of the carbon footprint of the ah. industry. And I have to put in, in a disclaimer because as an industry organization, of course, we are not directly uh, influencing any procurement uh, teams. But of course, we are providing guidance so that uh, this guidance uh, can be an even type of handbooks can be used by uh, by procurement teams uh, to use on a voluntary basis, of course. So when, so when the network operators are concerned about network efficiency, who are they going to for help? They, they can't come and ask you for advice, obviously, because you're not an advisory body. But what, what happens, Andrew? They... Well, I could I could give a plug to my old my old colleagues at STL Partners because yeah. they've got a sustainability practice, so they help people. But I think some of the other consultancies may other consultancies may exist that do the same things. I don't know, Neil. How did you go about it? Because I guess it's a problem. Yeah, I mean, about. so absolutely. Actually, we um, at Juniper we partner with STL um, mm. to create a, a set of cases for service providers. To, to map out their journey to reduce power. And, and this is the, and I perhaps made this point badly, but this is the point. This, this can't be an initiative. It's gonna be something that's baked into your fabric every day of every minute, as well as thinking about resiliency, which is telcos we're great Absolutely. at. We're thinking about energy usage. We're thinking about future functionality. Mm -hmm. We're thinking about making money and saving money. And, and too often that isn't built into the ethos. So, um, understanding the challenges that, that our customers face and then building some simple things into the network. So for example, you know, one of the, the highest energy, use, uh, energy users in a router, believe it or not, is a cooling fan. Okay, so, so where, does, where does that take you then? Okay, maybe I make a thinner chassis so I, don't, so I can expel heat more. 
maybe I figure out how to turn more stuff off so that I can not only save power on the stuff I've turned off, but I can save power on, on, on the actual fan. And these are all things that we've built into our latest devices. They're winding me up for our end of time, but you want to say something very, exactly. very quickly. Exactly. I mean, we, we do best practice sharing in ah. the projects. And of course, that's also helping um, the operators, each other, together with vendors and academia. And don't forget that many operators already have a very good sustainability and energy efficiency experts. So, so. Thank you, Anita. And Andrew. And Neil, of course. Uh, that's it for this version of Extra Shot. But... Keep viewing, we've got more coming later today and tomorrow we have lots of sessions. And don't forget, have your say. We do want you to take part in our polls. You can do it uh, each day. Uh, and of course, Guy and uh, uh, Ray will review the results for us as well. So thank you for joining with us. See you for the next Extra Shot.